Our guest today is Charlie Colhays. Charlie is a modern Renaissance man. He is a physicist and rocket scientist and worked at JPL and NASA for many years. Although his accolades are too numerous to mention, some of the highlights include the 2003 NASA Distinguished Service Medal, the agency's highest honor. He was awarded this for 40 years of contributions to the space program. That same year, he had an asteroid named after him, the 13801 Colhays by the International Astronomical Union. His Distinguished Service Medal was awarded for his work on the Mariner, Viking, Voyager, and Cassini space missions. Charlie is also an accomplished artist. Last year, one of his pieces was chosen for the cover of Artillery Magazine. In 2008, he won the 18th Annual Sierra Club Photo Competition in the Los Angeles area. He is also an author of, and has written two books, numerous feature articles for popular magazines, and hundreds of technical papers. In addition to that, Charlie is a philosopher, visionary, and environmentalist. We're here today to talk about his thoughts and visions about what is happening to our environment, the Earth. Charlie, thank you for coming. Hi. How does one guy, I've read your accolades online, and how does one guy accomplish so many things? <laughs> you live for 75 years, and you spend 50 hours every week doing the things you love. And sooner or later, you wow. get to cover science <laughs> okay. and art and environment. And that's and, tremendous. And, and, and that's it. You, you have, have so many accolades, I have no, to scroll down well, through no, the page. To, no, just live long enough and invest yourself in the things you love. Okay, well, I hope I live long <laughs> enough to accomplish everything that you've accomplished. Now, this artillery magazine, Charlie, uh, oh, you got the cover on it. Is that, an an ammo it's not an ammunition periodical. <laughs> okay. It's a killer art uh, magazine. That's they chose fabulous. that title because they thought they, they had the latest say in, in what was contemporary in the art world and therefore they could kill all other art magazines. Okay. And uh, uh, I certainly would not uh, contribute to a military magazine. So tell us what is happening to our earth. Uh, um, where should we're we we're trashing it. We're, we're, we're ruining it in all regards. I mean, you know, the, the, you hear about, about global warming. But what you don't hear about is the extinction of species. Species are going extinct at a thousand times the rate of only 150 years ago. Okay, so now, uh, let eight, me play the devil's advocate. So what? Do we need them? Do we miss the dinosaurs? Just well, I happen to love wildlife. I love the grizzlies and the polar bears and the Bengal tigers and the lions in Africa. And, and to think that, they, that there will be no more of them makes me sad. It makes me sad, too. It really does. I mean, and people I think, can say, so what? So they're gone. They made this earth beautiful. They certainly and I do, don't want to see them gone. Just and because we've got seven billion people desperate, well, some fraction of them, to consume Earth's resources faster than they can be replaced, at, at whatever cost to habitat, to, uh, to uh, everything. We're, we're overfishing the seas. Did you know that if you, could, if you could weigh all of the fish in the world's oceans, let's say, I often use 1850 as kind of a, mm -hmm. an epoch, and the reason that's sort of the beginning of the second industrial revolution, and you can sort of track things that have that have all gotten worse since about that time. So when I say the last 150 years. That's because the population, that allowed for huge population increases, right? Well, that, but more the Industrial Revolution, more the, 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 the uh, uh, use of coal and, and fuel and so forth to create everything, automobiles, machines, and so forth. Uh, it's really the developed countries, particularly the United States, that uh, uh, has contributed to that more than anything. Of course, China and India are coming online now. But uh, I don't know where we started with this. But it, we were start, the thing, that, the thing that, that, that worries me is that the great beauty of this planet is going fast, okay? Well, I started to tell you about the fish in the world's oceans. If you could weigh all of the fish in the oceans in 1850, put them all on a scale, and then weigh them today, the weight today is less than 10% of what it was in 1850. There are fewer fish, and they're not, they don't, they're not allowed to grow as large, and so the average weight per fish is less. Look, the, the, the famous cod banks, codfish off of uh, the Great Banks of Newfoundland, 150 years ago, fishermen would say that the cod were so dense that to row their boats through those waters, 
they had to sort of watch the cod part. And the overfishing has reduced the cod population to 1% of what it used to be. And, and, and it may vanish altogether. Okay, now, uh, as far as the overfishing goes, isn't, aren't there kind of loose laws to regulate uh, the there overfishing? There may be, but, oh. but, but they're not. The, the people are supposed to apply those, get so much pressure from the fisher, fishing industries that they always compromise. And in case, uh, I think this was in the case of the, the cod banks, when, when they started, when they had declined to a fairly dramatic level, people knew they should meet on this, and the right boards, fishing control boards and governments met, and decided that they should reduce the allowed harvest the following year by 50%, okay, which was the right thing to do. There was a great complaint from the fishing industry, and the politicians finally, to, to, to compromise those complaints, cut the limit by only 10%. The money wins out, enough. doesn't it? That's right. The money always wins out. And so uh, I, I worry about all these things. Uh, I, I, but I, back to my irreverent question about who needs species. Do you, I feel like this whole planet is like a great symphony. Well, it is, every, and it's all connected. Every all animal, every plant, every every organism, living organism, non-living thing has a part. It does. And we need it all. That's right. And the amazing thing, you, you know, you hear about air pollution and water pollution. In fact, all this is true. I mean, you, you take, China has 30,000 miles of rivers, okay. 85% of those 30,000 miles are too polluted for fish to live at all, okay. Now, when- How does that happen? It happens by- Is that industrial waste? Is that heat it, pollution? Or? It's mostly industrial waste. But one of the things that's been discovered recently is the effect of noise pollution on species. And you, you would think, well, that can't matter. But uh, a scientist recently, and I can't remember his name now, traveled to the most remote places he could find, let's say in South America, and, and set up recording devices to try to be as far away from human sounds as, as possible. And he, but there were still sounds. I mean, there's still the distant airliner that comes mm -hmm. over and so forth. And you say, well, okay, how can that possibly affect the uh, success of a given species? Well, different creatures call to each other when they're, call, when they're mating and they're trying to attract each other. They have their own little chirps in different parts of the frequency band, okay? When you were talking about this symphony, it gave me this mm -hmm. idea. And if a human sound steps on one of those critical frequencies, then that little guy or girl Is can't find their mate, okay? And so they have noticed that where there is noise pollution, certain species are starting to decline. So we're affecting not just the amphibian population. You know, the amphibian population and the bee population is down to half what it was 150 years ago. And didn't uh, uh, one of our great scientists say, uh, without the bees, we have four years left? Well, yeah. the bees have <laughs> a, play a tremendous role, that's right. And, uh, and yet I see people, a neighbor of mine has a bee problem, and so he wants to call in uh, an exterminator group to kill them. And what I is said, the bee no problem? Is that too many bees? Yeah. <laughs> and I've said to him, there's a service that will move the bees without killing them. And he said, okay. I said, look, pursue that option. Don't just ki kill them, relocate them.